Hey guys, what's going on? It's Bailey here. Uh, welcome to a tips and tricks video. Uh, today, I'll be showing tips and tricks, not on characters or, le or legends. Uh, it's just gonna be normal gun and uh, game sense uh, physics and stuff like that. Um, it's just gonna be the normal uh, tips and tricks tutorial on Apex. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into it. So uh, first of all, what I want you guys to understand about the weapons is that they have their own reload time, they have their own uh, type of play. Right, so my favorite gun at the moment is the P2020. And you guys might be going like, Bowie, why are you using P2020? It's like the worst gun in the game not if you know how to use it that's why i want you guys to um understand um if you know how to use the gun you know how to like master it it's very very helpful in the actual game so what i've actually done to the master the p2020 now let me just show you really quick and what I've done, so hand. But first of all, a trick with the P2020, or to any gun basically. So this is like my normal fire rate, yeah. So that's pretty standard fire rate. Like, pretty standard, yeah. Like pretty standard, pretty good for accuracy. But for the P2020 and any other single fire weapon, yeah. So basically, you have your normal stuff, all this. R2, L2, and that for aiming and shooting. Pretty standard. Now, what I want you guys to do, go to settings and copy my layout right now if you want to learn how to master single fire weapons. This is probably the best layout you can do for single fire weapons. I'll show you why. Go here, customized. Go to customize, so I've already done it. Um, L1 as jump, R1 as crouch, circle as melee, attack as right analog stick, press down. Uh, tactical ability is X and pinwheel is R2. Now go ahead and pause the video if you need time. But yeah, I'll show you why this is the most overpowered single fire weapon thing. So P2020. My R2 was very bad, very slow, as you guys saw, and you be going like, how does the R3 improve your speed? It's because the R3 doesn't have, like, the delay. It doesn't have um, time to pr be pressed. Like, if you press down now, um, the, like, L3, it won't, press it won't work immediately or it won't even work at all if you press it low well enough but the r3 no matter what you're always going to be able to press that down very fast and it's going to come up very quick now let me just go to a full dummy um and show you guys what i mean if you're up close have all the attachments you need for the p2020 it is the most overpowered thing in the game i'll just show you why Look, so I'm aiming with L2, um, firing with L3. Tip, um, but yeah, this is just crazy. This also leads into uh, tip number one, change your loadout, like change your buttons. Like that is like the biggest thing to succeeding and progressing or just even change like the way you hold your controller. I sometimes use claw, left claw, but uh, yeah, that's just sometimes, not all the time. I just use a normal standard dual shock controller. I sometimes use claw, but this set it out has helped me for the past day. <laughs> Haven't used it for very long. Today I found out, I don't think anyone in the world, maybe you guys have it just cause like you just, ex exploring different or trying out new like combinations with all your um all your 
uh, like abilities and stuff that you can press with different buttons. But this is what I want to show you. This is how fast it destroys and melts people with full armor and full health. Just watch. Like, that's insane. It takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven shots with all the attachments, or at least the hammer point. So you could defeat somebody with a hammer point on your weapon. As you can see, hammer point rounds. It is really overpowered. Like, just watch. From a distance, it's the same thing, overpowered. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, but that's because I uh, hit body shot once, but you can tell where I'm getting at. Just melt. Um, and this is also why I wanted you guys to change R3 as your attack button, because it just shoots so much faster. Like, just watch. Like, that's that. Like, you can... You can move, you can aim with it. You don't need to core anything. It's all there. Like, this is the best non-core... Oh. Uh, and like fastest thing you're gonna get with single fire weapons like you can't get much faster than that because that's like the maximum speed you can do um on controller at least if so if you're playing on controller you like single fire weapons pick up p20 change to these um like like this loadout this type of thing and just gun firing just practice hitting your shots and aiming with um with R3. It's very simple, very easy to pick up and um, see some more gameplay with this setup. It's very easy, it's very good. And yeah, it also works with other um ones such as the G7 scale which is good. Um the wingman because it gives you the most least or least amount of time to like press it again and it's just such a good single fire loadout or preset I should say it's just so good like look at that just destroys even though I did him headshot it still destroys just it's see it just destroys in under five seconds if you can hit your shots you go on practice range and do this it's very simple very easy very good um, but yeah, um, leading onto tip number two. Um, okay, tip number two is either your sensitivity, all right? So you may copy me, you may copy a pro, um, but no, that's not what you can do. Never copy somebody's sensitivity. That's never ever what you wanna do. Because I've learned, I've, had muscle memory into um with this sense but like it's so it's actually uh <laughs> don't mind me coughing guys i'm just uh, but yeah but this is my sensitivity four and five it's quite low but like look at that it just it spins fine but it's like not too fast or too slow for me you may, if you're using a uh, PC uh, mouse, uh, I'd suggest uh, going to your sensitivity settings on your mouse and set it to the lowest and upping your sense in, uh, upping your sense in the actual game. Cause that, it just, it'll feel a lot smoother and it will just like, overall look smoother and it will just help you because if you learn your new sense, your own sense, your custom sense, then that will just be more unique, uh, more suitable for you. So like if you copy somebody that has like a really high sense, like let's say a six and a seven, right? So that's really, really high. like. Yeah, it's still like playable, 
but if you're going for ranged shots like it's just not very good like it's more used for um uh let, like let's get this like the peacekeeper right so you get the peacekeeper it's more for like getting your uh flick shots like that except i'm not very good at my flick shots because i'm on control and it's a lot harder um I'll, if you do go for flick shots though i just stand here next to the dummy about this far apart and just keep on doing that until you get it right every single time then i'd say go into a real game and try it out on the natural um like in game lobby where you don't know where they're gonna be and stuff because it's just the best way to learn and stuff like that All right going into tip number uh three is find your weapons i can't stress this enough you copy somebody else's loadout, you never get good at that weapon, but yet you still stick with it. Like, if you do that, you're not learning. You're probably gonna lose, uh, like, succeeding. Like, the more you succeed, the better. So, my personal loadout, which is so many other people's loadout, is the R99 Wingman, stuff like that, and the Peacekeeper, or another gun. But another one of my loadouts, which I don't, I never see anybody with a uh, P2020 in their loadout. It's just not a gun that everybody has. Like P2020, R301. This is one of my loadouts. I would suggest if you're using this loadout, switch to my, uh, settings or switch it to like similar that um <coughs> that helps you like learn better like if you're learning this loadout uh this button combinations i'd suggest going on to like the ninja setting or the uh the uh the ninja or the evolved just because it's similar but once you're comfortable with them then move on to these settings because um it will take time getting used to the R3 as your attack. Um, so just go spend like 10 minutes in here and then go into a real game for muscle memory purposes and stuff. But uh, yeah, so tip number three is very big. Find your loadout. If you don't have your own unique loadout or you don't have a loadout, like your go-to loadout each game, that's gonna stuff you up very much because if you know how to play all of these weapons like from down there to here at a very average place like yeah that's good but say you pick up the p2020 and you're not good at that um then and you can't and you don't really want to change it then that's gonna like suck for you because you won't be comfortable using it you won't be like you won't be very uh comfortable and you'll probably be stressed when you play because you don't know how to use the weapon um so yeah um if you do go with p2020 though i'd suggest um going for peak shots let me just turn down my sense um um I suggest going for peak shots uh, like this. So you'd be here and then you'd be going like this. And then you reload, come back, finish them off. Come back, reload, and then look for his teammates and do the exact same thing. Um, whereas you got the after one, right? That does a ton of damage. You peek, use all your bullets, come back, maybe go come from a different angle and then use it like each weapon has a custom or like unique way of using it um and it's just very very helpful to know what ones you prefer and like then aim for those guns in the game now i'm not saying like go if you can't find that weapon don't pick up the, any other weapons 
Like, pick up other weapons if you can't find your main weapons. If you find your main weapons, then good for you. But if you can't, make sure you are familiar with it. Like, you don't have to be the best at it, just make sure you're familiar enough with it where it's, like, not uncomfortable that you can't, like, use that style of weapon or that, like, like, you don't know how long it's gonna, like, like the wingman, for instance. So if I have P2020, that's such a more faster pace where if you get the timing right on the wingman like that, then it's gonna be so helpful Whereas you're, like, just spamming it because then you won't have great accuracy, but, or if you just take time doing that, then that's a bit too slow. But if you know how to time it like that, that means you're comfortable with it, but you don't have to use it. Make sure you, so that's all for tip number three. Make sure you're comfortable with your weapon. Make sure you're familiar and make sure you know it's playing style. Now tip number four. Now, tip number four. If you guys do not know game sense. Now let's talk about game sense. What is game sense? And how do I use this to my advantage? All right. First of all, game sense is the most important key and aspect of any Battle Royale game. Rotation, uh, knowing where players are, stuff like that, that's game sense. That's what it is. That's how you get better. How you get better is on depending on what you do each game. Now, whoops, I'm see, even you guys, I'm still getting used to the new setup. Anyways, continuing back on topic. If you do not know what players are, you're in trouble because, especially in late game, if you do not know what players are. They're gonna sneak up on you, and if you sneak up on people, or if they sneak up on you, they're gonna have the advantage. But, if you are, if you sneak up on them, then it's a whole nother story. But if they know you're there while you're sneaking up, then they're gonna have the advantage because they're gonna surprise you because they could ambush you. And there's so many scenarios. Now, game sense, in rotations. Now, say if I was here, right, and I knew my player was over there somewhere, like, let's say, over in that tower. We'll find something here. All right, right? And since I'm caustic, I am, like, I have a large hitbox, so I can get hit pretty easily. So what I would do if the, I have to go over there, right? I'd get up on top of here, cause they, I'd go as far as I can back, and then get up there, and then go across. Cause they'd still think I was here. But since we went back up here, um, they're not gonna be focusing back there. They're gonna be focusing here where we are. Unless they have like, um, a wingman or like some sort of scoping like this, then they could pro possibly see but be unlikely. Cause if you're here and you keep on peeking, shooting at them, they're of course gonna think you're gonna keep on peeking from here. And then, but you're actually going up there and then you're going across up there. And then that's when you have the advantage. You can either shoot from up there or wait until they come to you and surprise them. So since I'm caustic, say I was hound, I'll get up there really quick, give me a sec. All right, now that we're up here. So say we're caustic and they didn't know we were here. If I got up top of there, placed one, two, and three things there, and I had, and then they come up, so they'll trigger these, they'll trigger these, all of them, because their team is coming up and stuff. And then you throw down your nade, yeah? So you throw down right your nade. Here. Now Not that's going to like, they're gonna wonder how you got up there. That would give you the advantage 
they'd be scared, they'd be healing, so they'd probably come like into this corner. And since you know that, um, go up there, go back there, drop down and throw nades like an arc star or something and start shooting. Because if you do that, you're gonna get some major damage in for your team. If you're playing, let's say there's a solo event, you do not wanna do that. You wanna stay up top, wait for them to come to you. Because they, if you're up there, if you're up here, there's two levels. So they could either be like aiming there, thinking you're back here, or they're aiming up there. But if you know, if depending on what way they're gonna be looking, like look through here, that's how you can tell they're gonna be like looking up or down but but if they see you go up there and you're looking down here they could do the move of going back there and just hiding there so this is when game sense and knowing your plays is gonna help because this will help you do smarter plays and better judgments which helps in late game all right now let's talk about since we've done late game, now let's talk about um, early game. Early game is a whole nother story. If you see people over there, like really, really far away, let's say 200 meters away from you. So let's just say that was 200 meters, right? It's obviously not 200 meters, but let's say it was, right? And you know they're there, but they don't see you and you have a long range rep weapon, do not shoot unless they're standing still and you know the exact point at which they're gonna shoot, at which you're gonna shoot. So like, if they were there, I'd have to like aim up a bit, stuff like that. But um, since you have a long range, long ranged weapon, stay up here, do not shoot and actually watch where they go. Cause if you know another team is over there, right? then they're gonna bump into each other and then they'll save you another position into um, late game, because this could lead into late game. Them two uh, kill each other and then another team would just probably start head over there because they heard gunfire. But since you're playing it safe, um, you're not going to like get into any trouble whatsoever and you'll be getting into late game which is good because you have your loot. If you have good loot, definitely go like hide when it's necessary and attack when it's necessary. Um, but yeah, just know when to push and when not to push, especially if they're like 150 to 200, 300 meters away from you. So just keep that in mind. Now early game, I know I'm going backwards here, but now early game, go, do not, go for hot drops or do not go for um, the first drop. Wait till like you're halfway between the map. That's when you want to either jump or wait till you're at the end of the map um, to jump. Now, if you're jumping at the middle of the map, it's probably best to go to like the opposite side that's the further way or just dive down because you're in the middle of the map um, to of locations and stuff. So dive down and stuff like that. Now, if um, if early game, what if you get in a situation with two teams there and there? A good point. They're go both going to be teaming up on you because you're in the middle of them. Like they're not going to shoot across unless they're like next to each other. If you're in the middle, what you want to do is distract them. So like throw grenades up them if you're Bangor, so let's switch to Bangor. If you're Bangor, throw nades, pop your ability, and if you have your ultimate ready, pop that as well in a direction of team, and your teammates, if, say you had a Gibraltar, throw uh, his ultimate in the direction of the other team, and use Bangor's smoke to get away, and uh, Gibby's shield, to uh, defend you. Now that's a very defensive move. The other option is being somebody like Wraith. So say you have a Wraith, tell that Wraith, or if you're the Wraith, go 
to like one side of the teammate, like use their so their ability and their ultimate to like go down there. Like yeah, you might be losing high ground, but at least they would be confused on where you are at. Cause if you spam nades and go that way, then or that way, depending on what way you want to go. Yeah, there might be the um, option of them, like the other team, killing you like that. But there is also the like chance of that team up there will jump down and will uh, attack you. So they'll jump down and start shooting at you because they won't be able to see you properly like this. If you're down beneath them like here, like, um, they won't be able to see you properly and they'll have to jump down and then start attacking you like that. Um, so that's one way to draw a team out. Or the third option is one of your team goes that way and one teammate goes that way and one teammate stays up there because they're going to be focusing on that teammate. They need three nades on each side. Uh, they'll probably hit the whole team and then start shooting. And then say uh, you had, a, a, let's just say Bangor and the Wraith went that way. Uh, so Bangor, pop Snoke, uh, come back this way or Wraith, pop her ability and go up there. Let's go this way. Then you'd have two people on one side and um, instead of one on each side and it will just make it so, so much better for the person there. And then say that per, that Wraith or whoever, or say you don't have a Wraith and you wanna go to your teammate, make sure that they're covering you as you run. So that's for early game. If you get like, uh, if one team's there and one team's there at you, the beginning of spawn. But now, um, Tip number five, right? Tip number five. This is probably one of the biggest ones of them all. It's tip number five. Okay. Tip number five. The biggest one of them all is loot. It may seem seem silly, but some people don't actually know how to loot properly. Now when looting, you don't wanna just like scan over it. Cause if you're scanning, or let's say through a death box, you're just scanning cause there's another team. Um, make sure that one of you like scan the loot or two of you scan the loot while one person uh, defends, right? And then for the next box, just rotate the um, jobs because then you get a fair share of loot and fair share of guarding. Now, what happens if one team attacks you while you're looting? Well, then try to get out of there and re, um, like, re, get a point on them that they can't get on you and you can keep on, like, shooting at them to, like, cover and stuff for the other teammates to get back and then all push. So that's what would happen if you get attacked while waiting. But um, let's say it's not mid game or late game. Let's say it's the first uh, like jump, like early game, right? What you wanna do is, now, if it's early game, loot thoroughly. Because if there's no teams around, you want to be looting thoroughly. Because take your time and like, oh, will I need that later on? Or do I need this now? Stuff like that. That will help you leading on to mid game and late game. Knowing a plan for a looting, a looting route, that is like the best way to go about the game. Looting route, knowing people's situation, and uh, position and rotation. That's like the most important thing of game knowledge and game sense. Now, 
Um, yeah, so, looting. Uh, so, once you're done looting thoroughly, you come across some smaller areas, like some no-name areas. Loot them quick. Don't loot them slow, because if you loot them slow, more people will be coming towards you, or um, they're at you. Um, loot quickly at small non-named areas, because if you want to go for kills, uh, loot quickly. If you want to be a bit more passive, and uh, let the teams come to you and find you. Loot slow, uh, slowly at uh, early game, um, and then loot quickly. Sorry about that, guys. The server shut down on me. That's actually ridiculous that that happened. Anyway, going back to looting, looting thoroughly, looting quickly stuff like that that is the most important like or not the most important but it's a important subject knowing where you're gonna loot knowing the position like where you uh, loot is going to be is a good uh, like knowledge factor which can help you get guns before your opponent um or like say you're obtained Press your ability and loot as fast as you can and then hunt down your enemies because they won't have a gun straight away. Um, so that's for looting. Um, yeah, now. Now that's all the tips I have for today. Or this video, I should say. Um, if you want more tips like this, make sure to hit that thumbs up. And uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're new. Um, this is not the end of the year. I actually have, um, a, a tip and trick, or not a tip and trick, just like a good old, um, like, trick, just a good old fashioned glitch or easter egg, I think it is, I'm not too sure what it is. I'll only just go Pathfinder. Um, if you go up to this corner here, go to this bush, so like behind these and stuff, like here. Um, if you actually, like you can use any character for this, it doesn't really matter, like I'll just use Caustic or Wraith because she's my main. Um, you crouch, right, you crouch to this corner, crouch to this corner, look down, hold forward, um, and then switch character. It, it may not work like he, like the first try. You may do it again. Like you might have to do it again. Um. This time will be different. Yeah, I'll I'll show you guys when it's done. All right, guys. Um, I figured it out. Let me just quickly. Uh. I don't think I. No, I can't die. So what you want to do is drop all your weapons drop all your weapons uh drop all your weapons all your ammo anything that you have including armor stuff like that so everything that you're holding or have in your inventory then you come to this corner you crouch look it down hold forward and then change your character just like that like see i'm back in first person um wait look it I'd, I'll do it again. Come this corner, crouch down, w look down, hold forward, change character. You can change character by um, pressing the uh, the pad in the middle of your DualShock controller. I'm not sure what it is on the Xbox. It could be the uh, the Xbox symbol. Press that down. It might be that, or it could be the uh, what it. It, something like that um i know that much um you just look down and if you want to get rid of third person do this just do it again just like that you can use your abilities and stuff even if you and you're in third person just like this wait hand you can still use it um stuff like that it's just cool little easter egg like you can jump, the, the whole jump animation 
stuff like that. It looks pretty sick. I quite like it. It's just fun to mess around with, with your friends, just 1v1 like this. It's pretty funny. Um, because the running animation on Watson is just gold. Um, unfortunately, armor does not show. It does not show. Uh, but you can see, like, all your animations and stuff. Like, see, that's on your side. That's on your back. It's actually, it's actually pretty funny. Uh, let me just grab ammo. But, yeah, it, unfortunately, it does not show the reload animation like it does in first person. But, yeah, it's just a cool little Easter egg that, um, they put in here that, yeah, it's just the good as Easter egg that they put in here. It's very interesting to aim. Like, you have to, you have to aim like at the direct middle or something like that, or it'll just like, make it a, like, yeah, just make it a headshot as long as like the, like middle-ish crosshair is on it. Um, just like that, but you, if it's a bit off to the side, it will still hit. But yeah, that's just cool little Easter egg. If you guys enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Share this to more people if they do not know this glitch already, or if they need more help with Apex, or you just generally think that they're bad, so they need more help. Yep, that's if you're watching this because your friend sent to you. That's the reason why, because they think you're bad. Um, but yeah, uh, make sure to like this video, uh, subscribe to me if you're new, go check out my Twitch stream Saturdays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Sometimes in the morning, probably like 9-ish in the morning sometimes. But yeah, go check me out, I'm pretty good. I stream Fortnite and Apex, Realm Royale, stuff like that on PS4. Add me, Kid Fiber, Kid Unscore Fiber. And yeah. Well, hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time, I guess. Bye-bye. Putting down the fence.